Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Alisa Hanis from Group KK1 and my group members are Tuga Devi, Umi Darisha, Azmina Usna and Ikwan Irsyad. We are going to present our integrated project entitled Production of Acrylic Acid. First and foremost, acrylic acid with molecular formula CH2CHCOH is the simplest unsaturated carboxylic acid. It is colorless liquid with and water, ethanol, benzene, chloroform and acetone. It occurs as a viscous liquid with pungent smell and STP. Acrylic acid also finds application in various industries due to its varying degree of durability, thickness, and hardness. The usage of acrylic acid are uh, used in the production of acrylic ester and resins, such as ethyl acrylic and butyl acrylic. Second, as a building block in the production of polyacrylic acid polymers, including superabsorbent polymers. Uh, lastly, used in coatings, adhesive, paint, formulation, textile, polishes, and plastic. So moving on to the next slide which is physical and chemical properties of acrylic acid. First of all, I will be presenting about the main product of our company which is acrylic acid. The properties of acrylic acid, it is a colorless liquid that has a pH from 1 to 2 and it has a boiling point of 139 degrees Celsius at 760 millimeter mercury. Besides that, it is also a melting point of 13 degrees Celsius. So, for the production of acrylic acid, several raw materials are required like propylene, oxygen, diisopropyl ether and deionized water. So, for example, the properties of propylene is, it is a colorless gas that has a boiling point of negative 47.7 degrees Celsius with a solubility of 384 milligram per liter. Besides that, oxygen is also a colorless gas and it has a boiling point of negative 183 degrees Celsius. Apart from that, Diisopropyl ether and deionized water are colorless liquid and both are soluble in water. Next, I represent supply and demand. Global demand is higher than global supply for acrylic acid. And we can see in the years of 2019, global supply is 6,300, while global uh, demand is 8,150. We expect that global demand will increase continuously from 2021 to 2023. It is expected that production of acrylic acid will reach approximately 7,162,000 tons by the end of the year 2023 with CAGR 3% per year. One of the main factors of uh, increasing global demand is super absorbent polymer in personal care industry. Next, list of company. Arkema with plant capacity 200, uh, 250,000 and Nippon Shokubai with plant capacity 470,000 BASF Petronas with 160,000 Dow Chemical Texas with 580,000 and last one LG Chem with 353,000 of plant capacity For plant capacity First of all, we calculate the efficiency, which is demand minus supply, and then we get 4998 times 10 to the power of 6 kg per year. And then we proceed plant capacity calculation, which is uh, efficiency times 9.4. We choose 9.4 from demand, and then we get 498.0522 times 10 to the power of 6 kg per year. And then we divide by 8400 hours, which is 350 days convert to hour and then we get 5.5720.5 kg per hour. There are a few ways to produce acrylic acid but catalytic partial oxidation of propylene is chosen because it is economically viable approach. Two-stage selective oxidation of propylene into acrylic acid takes place where acrylene is fast acting intermediate. Temperature of range between 310 until 350 because highly exothermic is needed to carry out the oxidation process. Next is acrylic formation reaction equation and also acrylic acid formation reaction equation. So this is our PFD. As we can see here, the raw materials are mixed in the big surface before being fed into reactor 1, which is trickle back reactor and the reactor that reaction that occurs here is acrylic formation. The reactor operated at temperature of 300 degrees C and the yield of acrylic is 23%. The products and byproducts are then transferred to reactor 2 where acrylic is reacted with oxygen to form acrylic acid. The temperature operated at 300 degrees C and the yield of acrylic acid is 97%. Then the products are fit into adsorption column where CO2, oxygen, propylene, acrylic acid that is not dissolved in the solvent are removed at the top stream. Then the bottom product are transferred to extractor where it extracts acrylic acid 
and acetic acid from other components with abstraction efficiency of 89 for both. Then the reactor column, uh, the DIE are recycled back to the mixer to be used at absorption column. And lastly, at the acid column, acrylic acid is separated from acetic acid in water with purity of 95%. So we've got our pin product, which is acrylic acid with purity of 95%. Uh, for mass balance in reactor R101, there's two chemical equations involved. To find the rate of fraction for both equations, we have to use the selectivity of alcoholing and the conversion of the propylene. Uh, conversion is 0.93, selectivity is 0.85. Use both the conversion and the selectivity formula to find the R1 and the R2 for the reactor. After that, uh, use the component balance formula and in go to and out minus alpha 1 R1 minus alpha 2 R2 to find the mass flow rate in the index string and the mass flow rate in the outlet string for each component. Then. then the total of the index string is equal to the total of the outlet string. So the mass balance for this vector is balanced. For mass balance in vector R102, the chemical equation formula is 2 alkaline plus 102 equal to uh, 2 alkali acid. Uh, the conversion of the alkaline is 0 0.97. Use the conversion to find the uh, rate of reaction for the reactor 2. Then find the component mole balance for each of the components in index string 7 and the outlet string A. After that, find the total mass flow rate for the inlet and the outlet string. Then the total of the, the total of mass flow rate for inlet is equal to the total mass flow rate of the outlet string A. So the mass balance in vector two is uh, balanced. For energy balance calculation in vector one, use the data hash equal to integrate T1, T2, CPDT. Uh, T1 is 393.15K and T2 is 583.15K. And use the formula above to find the enthalpy for each of the component in the stream 5 and the stream 6. So the table the table shows the free enthalpy in stream 5 and the product enthalpy in stream 6. So to find the Q, uh, Q is equal to the product enthalpy minus free enthalpy plus R1 data H fraction 1 plus R2 data H fraction 2. So the value of Q is negative 4.35 times 10 to the power of 8 kJ per hour. And so, the system is the exothermic process. The comparison material energy balance with SuperPro simulation software. For mass balance comparison with SuperPro, the percentage error is bigger than the percentage error in reactor R102. And for the energy balance, we can see that for both reactor R102 and R101, R101, the percentage error is bigger for both, for both reactor. So moving on to waste management. There are three components of waste in our plant, which is acetic acid, waste water, and of gases. Acetic acid contains water, waste water contains dionous water, that is purple ether, water, acetic acid, and alkylic acid. Of gases contain acrylic, nitrogen, oxygen, and propylene. So both of acetic acid and waste water are liquid, and of gases for sure are gas. So we all know that waste are harmful for humans if not treated. So, for the acetic acid, based on the regulation, it needs to be burned into the chemical incinerator equipped with afterburner and scrubber. Or, we also can dispose it to the licensed disposal company. And same goes to wastewater, we also can uh, incinerate into the suitable incineration plant holding a permit delivered by the competent authorities. For the off gases, we can burn it in the combustion chamber following with the pyrolyzer. Heat transfer. So this one is the schematic diagram of radio heat flow through multi-layer cylinder, which is uh, right now we focus on reactor two, which is spherical bed reactor. So to find out the overall heat transfer rate, uh, there are several steps need to be followed. First of all, we need to find the volume, uh, and then we find the height of reactor, and then the area and lock mean area of the reactor, and the uh, and then we find out the Reynolds number. And also, we calculate the dimensionless number. And lastly, we find out the resistance. Okay, so this one is the formula for find out the resistance. So this is the radius of the reactor, which is spherical back reactor. So this one, on the other side, is the coefficients for the thermal conductivity and convective heat transfer coefficients. So using these uh, equations, we find out that overall heat transfer rate is 22865.66 watts. Next, I will present mass transfer. Mass transfer is relative motion of species in a mixture concentration gradient. By looking at calculation Reynolds number, it is 4292 
is bigger than 4,000. Thus, it is a turbulent flow. First of all, by using Stokes-Eastern formula, uh, we get depression coefficient is 3.4627 times 10 to the power of negative 9 meters squared per second. And then, we get SV number by using formula uh, is 92458.9884. Uh, next, we get Sherwood number by using formula 1076.8415. Convective mass transfer coefficient, we get 4.0707 times 10 to the power of negative 7 uh, meter per second. And then we get mass plug by using formula, it is 5.9315 times 10 to the power of 6 kg uh, per m squared second. So, for the part of chemical reaction engineering 1, we are required to choose the design of reactor to perform the reaction. So, for the production of acrylic acid, we will be choosing trickle back reactor. This is because for the production of acrylic acid, it involves two reactors and at both reactors, it involves two different phases which is liquid phase and gas phase. Since the reaction involves two different phases, so it will be easier to perform the heterogeneous reaction using the trickle back reactor. Besides that, we will be choosing stainless steel 316 for both reactors because it has high resistance towards high temperature and corrosion. This is because at both reactors, the reaction requires temperature above 300 degrees Celsius. Apart from that, trickle back reactor can operate at low cost and easy to install. It is also as lower attrition and minimal handling of catalyst since in trickle back reactor, the catalysts are in the packaging form. Next is kinetic rate expression. For this part, we are required to obtain the rate law for the reaction that occurs at the reactors. So, since for the production of acrylic acid, it involves two reactors, we will be choosing one of the reactors to perform the rate law. So, we will be choosing the reactor 1 where the reaction occurs between propylene and oxygen to produce acrylene and water. Before we continue to perform the rate law, we will be assuming species A as propylene and species B as Oxygen. So, by using the general equation for rate law where negative Ra equals to the multiplication of rate constant between and the concentration between species A and species B. So, by using the stoichiometric table below, we substitute the values for the concentration of species A and species B and we will obtain a new equation. So, by further simplifying, we will obtain this equation. So, by substituting that epsilon is equals to 0, we will obtain the rate law for the reaction that occurs at Reactor 1 where this is the equation. As I mentioned on the previous slide that for the production of acrylic acid, it involves two reactors. So we will be using two different catalysts for each reactor. So for the reactor 1, we will be using bismuth 3 molybdate and for reactor 2, we will be using vanadium molybdenum oxide. This table here shows the properties for both catalysts where for bismuth 3 molybdate and for vanadium molybdenum oxide, it has same limit temperature which is 350 degrees Celsius and the void fraction is 0.3. So the advantages of these both catalysts is it can continue the reaction to produce acrylic acid at same degree of yield during the initial stage of reaction without appreciably increasing the reaction temperature. Apart from that, it can exhibit high activity even at low temperature. Besides that, this catalyst suffers no degradation of catalytic property. At the end of the reaction, when we are able to produce the acrylic acid, we need to know several ways to stabilize the acrylic acid. For example, we can stabilize the acrylic acid by the addition of 200 ppm of hydroquinin monomethyl ether or we can store it under air but not under inert gas. Apart from that, we can store acrylic acid between temperature of 15 to 25 degrees Celsius to stabilize it. Okay, this is the MATLAB for chart uh, to be used in the coding in the MATLAB. The output coding for R101 and R102 is the same with the manual mass balance calculation. As you can see in the coding in the coming window of R01 and the coming window of R02. Okay, for MATLAB comparison with manual calculation and super proof, we can see that the percentage error in reactor R102 is relatively small when compared to the uh, percentage error in the reactor R101, maybe due to the sun error in the calculation. So lastly, conclusion. So our plan decided to produce acrylic acid using two-step process catalytic oxidation of propylene. The catalyst used in reactor 1 is bismuth 3 molybdate, while for the reactor 2, we use molybdenum oxide.
So the plan currency for this project is 5.720.5 kg per hour. Overall mass balance is 3.3513.8 kg per hour. Energy balance for reactor 1 is 94.35 as for an 8 kJ per hour. And for the reactor 2 is negative 1.87 as for an 8 kJ per, per hour. So both values are negative, so it means they are atomic reactions. So the heat is released to the surrounding. So for the heat transfer and mass transfer, we focus on reactor 2, which is trickle back reactor. So that the heat transfer is the 22865.66 volt. While for the mass transfer, we got 5.9315 as for the negative 6 kilogram per meter square second. So for the both reactor, which is reactor 1 and reactor 2, uh, we use trickle back reactor. Uh, so this one is the red law. And lastly, manual mass balance in reactor 1 and 2 are similar to mass balance in MATLAB. Uh, so that's all from us. Thank you.